a child prodigy, a demanding musical father, and the beginning of a career that was to enrich music forever. Today on the History Chronicles we will be looking at the life and times of the young Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was born on the 27th of January 1756 in Salzburg, Austria. He was the seventh child of Leopold and Anna Maria Mozart, but sadly it was only he and his sister Nanel who survived into adulthood. The new baby boy was baptised into the Catholic Church at Salzburg Cathedral with the name Johannes Chrysostomus Wolfgang Theophilus. Later this lengthy name was to be dropped in favour of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Amadeus meaning beloved of God in Latin. The young Mozart was born into a household that was already resonant with the sound of music. His father, Leopold, had had a good education with the Jesuits and had trained as a composer and violinist. His book, The Violin Method, was already successful by the time of Wolfgang's birth and was later to be translated into eight languages. But the main means of gaining a living as a musician in the 18th century was to gain a permanent position at the court of an aristocrat. In Salzburg lived the wealthy Count Leopold Anton von Fermian. The Count was the Prince Archbishop of Salzburg, an ecclesiastical post that formed part of the Holy Roman Empire, covering most of modern-day Germany and Austria. Here, Leopold Mozart had gained success when he was appointed as the fourth violinist in the Prince Archbishop's Orchestra in 1743. One year after Wolfgang's birth, Leopold had pleased the Prince Archbishop so much that he was appointed court composer at Salzburg, where he also conducted the cathedral choir. With such outstanding musical credentials himself, there is little doubt that Leopold Mozart wanted his children too to be brought up in the world of music. Leopold gave lessons to his daughter Nanel when she was seven. While the two played at the keyboard, however, it was the young Wolfgang who looked on and became intrigued at the goings-on at the clavier. Nanel recorded later that her three-year-old brother spent much time at the keyboard picking out thirds and showing his pleasure when it sounded good. According to Nanel, Wolfgang was four when his father began to teach him some short pieces of music. Almost immediately, the young boy played faultlessly and with the greatest delicacy, keeping exactly in time, Nanel wrote. Leopold's diary echoes the words of Nanel in Wolfgang's early musical capabilities. Little Wolfgang learned eight minuets in his fourth year, he wrote in 1759. A year later, Leopold found his young son composing. At this age, Wolfgang could manage just a smudge of notes according to his father, but nevertheless, Leopold wrote that tears of joy fell from his eyes as he began to realise the attraction that his son had to music. Wolfgang's earliest recorded composition comes from 1761, when he was just five years old. This andante, musical terminology for moderately slow, was transcribed by Leopold and sounds like this. autumn, Leopold had his son make his first public appearance at Salzburg University. The following year, the young Mozart performed before the Prince Elector of Bavaria, and, in Vienna, he played in front of the imperial court itself. At the end of his performance, the young Wolfgang jumped off his stool at the harpsichord and ran up to the Empress Maria Theresa, whom he kissed. So impressed was the Empress Maria Theresa by young Wolfgang's performance that she returned the compliment to the talented boy and gave him a warm kiss too. It was on this occasion that Mozart allegedly playfully fought a young Marie Antoinette who ran up to the Empress her mother in an attempt to get the boy off of her. The Mozart family's first tour in Austria was received with great acclaim. Such were Wolfgang's talents that Leopold himself seems to have given up composing to focus more time developing the prodigious abilities of his son. But this first tour of 13 consecutive concerts was not without its toll on the seven-year-old prodigy. Upon returning home to Salzburg, 
the young Wolfgang was briefly ill and bedbound with rheumatic fever. The Mozart family's adventures to Bavaria and Vienna were to set a precedent for a childhood of travel. In the summer of 1763, Leopold, Wolfgang and Nanel set off on what was to be a grand tour of 17 different cities across Europe. They began their journey in Munich, where, Leopold writes in his diary, Wolfgang tried the organ. After only a short lesson from his father, young Mozart was away, deftly managing the organ's pedals along with the keyboard playing that he was already used to. His father wrote simply that everyone was amazed. Mozart's abilities were recognised as a gift from God. Leopold recognised that these were the types of abilities that others worked for years to develop. But that is not to say that the young Mozart avoided hard graft in his early years. In the 18th century, it was quite normal for concerts to last for many hours. Those given by the Mozart family were no exception. A performance given on the evening of June the 13th, 1763, began at 8pm and was not over until 11 o'clock at night, with both Wolfgang and his sister Nanelle showcasing their virtuosic playing throughout. After Munich, the trio moved on to Augsburg, where Leopold had connections. Here Leopold wrote that young Wolfgang, who remember was only seven years old by now, often woke in the night, homesick and crying for those he missed back at home in Salzburg. But the tour continued. Three more concerts in Augsburg, followed by more performances in Frankfurt. The Mozarts were even called to the home of the celebrated German poet, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Both of the Mozart children were here displayed in equal measure. Nanel was no longer in Wolfgang's shadow, Leopold wrote in a letter to his wife Anna Maria. Little Wolfgang, he added, was astonishingly happy, but also very naughty. After Austria and Brussels, the next stop on the Grand Tour was the hub of the European cultural scene, the city of Paris. The Mozarts travelled in their own coach to Paris, arriving there on the 18th of November 1763. On New Year's Day 1764, they performed for King Louis XV in his palace at Versailles. Here again, young Wolfgang's cheeky personality charmed. While at dinner, the boy of seven stood alongside the French Queen and kissed her hand while she fed him morsels of food. The Mozart's fame now preceded them on their travels, and they were celebrated by the French nobility on their appearance at court. Young Wolfgang's first published works appear at this time too. This was his first sonata for violin, his official first piece of music as it were. The boy had seemingly picked up the violin from his father alongside his first instrument in the harpsichord. The sonata form of music involves five parts or movements. The first is usually longer and sets the tone for the rest of the work. This is followed by a slow movement, then a traditional dance in a minuet and trio. Finally, the work ends with a fast-paced finale. This work for violin saw young Wolfgang following traditional methods of composition for the day, but nevertheless displays remarkable talent and skill for an eight-year-old boy. After Paris, all four of the Mozarts, Wolfgang, Nanel, Leopold and Anna Maria, now journeyed to London. Here they performed for yet another monarch, the music-loving King George III. The king set the young boy tests in playing music at sight, giving him works by Bach and Handel. This it seems Wolfgang was able to accomplish with ease, much to the king's delight. He even accompanied the queen in a song. It was only upon seeing a cat that the young Mozart was distracted and slipped from his stall to give the feline a big hug. The family spell in London was to be longer than that in Paris. They first stayed near Leicester Square, before moving to Soho, where they lodged with a corset maker until the following year. Leopold's health, however, began to suffer in the confines of this bustling metropolis, and eventually they moved out of the city to the village of Chelsea, which is now part of London. Nevertheless, the rigorous demands that Leopold placed on his children continued. He had his son dedicate three works for piano to the English Queen Charlotte, and planned out a demanding schedule of performances for Wolfgang and Nanel. In February 1765, the pair played an entire week of concerts in the Swan and Hart pub in London each day from noon to three o'clock in the afternoon. While in England, young Wolfgang was also introduced to Johann Christian Bach, the son of the legendary composer Johann Sebastian Bach, 
whose compositions had achieved widespread fame throughout Europe. Johann Christian was the master of music to the Queen Charlotte, and had just turned 30 when he met the boy Mozart. It seems the two got on well. Leopold wrote in a letter that young Wolfgang had been busy playing one of Bach's compositions at the piano. Indeed, Leopold Mozart appeared delighted with the family's warm reception in England. What we've experienced in England outshines the rest, he commented in 1765. It was in London also that Wolfgang composed his first symphony. This was a significant step forward in Mozart's journey as a composer. Whereas sonata form consists of music usually for one instrument and keyboard accompaniment, the symphony is a work performed by an entire orchestra. As such, great musicianship is needed to explore the tones and set the balance of sound for a much larger palette of instruments. Mozart's first symphony, which he wrote when he was only eight years old, begins with a short fanfare, which soon sets the listener off into a world of long suspended harmonies. The work is rich in joyous melody, but also playful. In it, you can almost hear a child playing with a new toy. From the andante, the slow movement, a warming, rising scale passage emerges from the cellos and basses that is answered by the rest of the strings and woodwind. It appears to be a glimpse into passages of Mozart's later, more mature writing. The final movement, marked presto meaning fast, is stately and graceful perhaps evocative of the court dances and aristocratic world which the young Wolfgang had come to know so well on his tour. Musically, Mozart's first symphony broke no new ground in its structure and instrumentation, but what it does show is that, at the tender age of eight, a young boy of unrivalled musical talent could already step into the magical world of orchestral composition. He would enrich it with his own sense of passion and playfulness. Such was young Wolfgang's advanced musical knowledge that some in London came to doubt his musical abilities. In the summer of 1765, with the family living in Chelsea, a member of the Royal Society, one Danes Barrington, came to put the boy through a series of tests. These included covering the keyboard with a cloth and asking Mozart again to play a series of difficult works by sight. Wolfgang's age appears to have been confirmed, however, not so much by the tests themselves, but by his excited reaction to a cat which wandered into the room. This again, as at the Royal Court of Versailles, distracted the young boy from his music as he preferred to play with the cat rather than the keyboard. Another visit saw Mozart again distracted, running around the room with a stick between his legs pretending he was a horse. Barrington was convinced. The young Mozart was indeed just a boy. The family finally left London in the spring of 1765 for Holland, as the trio journeyed forward to Canterbury, then Dover, ready to cross the channel, Leopold remarked that his young son was dreaming of an opera for young people, which he would put on when he got back to Salzburg. But sadly it seems that the intensity of the Mozart family schedule had finally caught up with them. Leopold, Anna Maria, Wolfgang and Nanel all now fell ill. Leopold had angina, and Wolfgang and Nanel had intestinal typhus. After just a short spell of recovery, however, Young Wolfgang gave his first solo concert, and, as the family moved on from Holland to Paris, he went on to publish six more sonatas for violin. Despite having been racked by severe illness, the young boy was still remarked upon in the French capital as being one of the sweetest personalities one could meet. 1766 was to see the family grand tour come to an end, but not before another enthusiastic spree of performances. In Utrecht, Amsterdam, Antwerp, Brussels, Paris and Munich, the Mozart family gave even more concerts. People who had seen young Wolfgang at the beginning of his tour in 1763 were now amazed to see the product of just three years of the boy's musical development. Finally, in November 1766, the family arrived back home in Salzburg. They had spent a busy three years on the road. During this time they had met kings, queens, nobility and prestigious musicians and had been treated almost as equals. For Leopold, it must have been a peculiar experience returning to his day job as a court violinist to a third-rate Austrian nobleman. As for Wolfgang, his first grand tour of Europe had no doubt opened his eyes to the wider world and the rich possibilities therein for a career in music. 
On the tour, the Mozart children had evidently shared an intense, close relationship with their father. He had organised their concerts, planned their schedule and travel. As they journeyed from city to city in the primitive offerings of 18th century Europe, they also shared beds at times. Leopold noted in one of his letters that his son snored. Wolfgang no doubt also developed a close relationship with his sister Nanelle, who he wrote to affectionately in later life. The pair gave almost all of their early concerts together, and both seemed to have had little exposure to children outside of the family. Once back in Salzburg, Leopold did not want the family to stay put for long. After only nine months at home, Herr Mozart asked for leave once more from the Prince Archbishop to go back on the road. No doubt Leopold was eager for a repeat of the glory days he had experienced in the years before. The family arrived in Vienna in September of 1767, most likely with high hopes for more performances at the court of the Holy Roman Emperor. However, this time, things were different. Panic gripped the city following an outbreak of smallpox. The Mozarts fled to nearby Olmutz, but were sadly too late to avoid Nanel and Wolfgang from contracting the deadly disease. Wolfgang was ill until December, and scars of this disease were to remain with him into adulthood. By Christmas 1766, things were seemingly back to normal with the Mozarts, as Leopold organised a concert for Nanel and Wolfgang in the local tavern at Brunn. In ten days the trio were back in Vienna, the capital now free of smallpox. They were presented at the Viennese court in January 1768. But for some at court, the Wolfgang aged 12 seemed to lack the same appeal that he had had in his earlier infancy. The same Empress, Maria Theresa, who had graced Wolfgang with a kiss in 1763, now appeared apathetic. Instead it was her son, the new Emperor Joseph II, who received the young Wolfgang and encouraged the 12-year-old to embark on a new ambitious project. Mozart had written his first sonata and his first symphony, but he had not yet composed an opera. An opera was indeed an immense undertaking. The project needed not only an understanding of the orchestra, but also of chorus and vocal soloists. It also required the semblance of a story and words in the form of a libretto. Whereas a symphony might last up to 30 minutes in this period, an opera would likely go on as long as three or four hours. Was this too much for just a boy? Wolfgang completed his first opera, La Finta Semplice, or The Make-Believe Idiot, in 1768. But vicious rumours circulated among the Viennese that it was not the boy's own work. Was his father seeking to make money, promoting his own compositions and passing them off as those of his talented son? Leopold tried in vain to have the opera staged, but to no avail. Only a smaller mini-opera, called an operetta by Wolfgang, was performed to a private audience in October 1768. As he grew older, however, the young Wolfgang could take things into his own hands and prove his doubters wrong. In 1768, the boy composed his first set of music for the Catholic Mass. Music for the Catholic Church no doubt played an integral role in the life of the young Mozart. The boy was almost certainly an able soprano and likely heard and performed music at church with his father growing up. One story goes that aged 14, he heard the famous Miserere Mei performed by the choir at the Vatican in Italy. This piece had been regarded as so special by the Pope that the pontiff had forbidden its transcription and performance outside of the Vatican. But that was no problem for the young Mozart. After one hearing only, he wrote it down, and the score soon became known outside of the walls of the Papal Palace. Mozart's first mass was performed in the church of a Viennese orphanage in the winter of 1768 with young Wolfgang himself conducting. The imperial family sat attentively in the audience as the Latin words of the mass sailed through the church in Mozart's glorious music. Wolfgang must have looked older than his years for a 12-year-old as he directed the gathered ensemble of court and church musicians. For Leopold, this was a triumph. His son's talents were once again at the fore for all to see. The family's name was restored after the debacle surrounding his son's opera, and the name of Mozart would be doubted no more. In 1769, the family returned from Vienna to Salzburg, where young Wolfgang's fortunes were again to change considerably. At the age of only 13, he was given the post of concertmeister to the Salzburg court. 
The position was without pay, but young Mozart was granted a gift of 120 ducats as he started out. More important was the prestige. The musical boy wonder who had in his infancy impressed the highest echelons of European royalty now had his own job as composer and conductor to a prince archbishop of the Holy Roman Emperor. From this, even greater things were to come, but that is a story for another day. Thank you very much for watching this episode of the History Chronicles, I do hope that you've enjoyed it. Please stay tuned for more history in the future, like and subscribe, support our channel on Patreon if you can, and I'll see you next time for some more history.